Um, if you could give one piece of advice to a new better entering this space, what would it be? Open as many accounts as possible. Even if you don't fund them, just have them and learn to find the best price. I think Johnny said it better earlier in the book. Like just shop. Doesn't matter if you're betting or not. Just their accounts are free to open. Do it. Thank you for saying that. We will cut that into a short clip and repurpose that for our other That's platforms it. as well. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, one common piece of betting advice that you think is often overstated or just straight up false. Uh, it doesn't matter if you beat the closing line or not, as long as you win. I think that's, and it's, it's really tough for people to understand because of the like implied entitlement that comes from beating the closing line where people will be like, they'll take a four and a half in football that closes four. And they're like, well, I'm, I should win now. I beat the closing line. And it's like, that's, that's not the point you're doing it because it's a process orientated thing. And, and that half point, you're probably right online with the VIG anyway, if you remove it. So like there's, there's differences within that, but it's, it's hard for people to understand. But when you're just looking at wins or losses, you're leaving out the most important part of everything. Agreed. Okay. So we're two for two on agreement here. Last right. one, this one's actually not even educational, but I just really interested in it. Um, one thing that currently happens in the betting space that. I mean, you're a very positive guy, so maybe nothing drives you insane, but something that kind of drives you up a wall or irks you and potentially a solution on what can be done to fix it. Ooh. Um, are we talking like bookmaker or product offering? Or are we talking like content and people thinking about that? Anything. Either. Either one. I would say, and this is just because it's like relevant within football, and it kind of goes back to that process and like thinking about that in a way when people look at like the last series of a game and how it might define a bet, but they leave out the other like 58 minutes of a game and how that played into it. And they're like, well, that was a lucky win or boy, that was a, you should have lost that one, but you got away with it. Um, and it takes away from like either like how the entire game or bet or the whole market leading up to that transpired, like just having that chunk of it. I think there's so much focus on that then. And those comments and those discussions are, are just nuts um, from like a, a, a product and like offering thing that bookmakers do. I think, again, like I kind of alluded to it, you could go off on limiting for a long time, but I would say now what we're starting to see, which is for some reason becoming more common is like unclear terms or like, gaming around terms of either bonuses or just like day-to-day -day markets with all of these specials and things that are popping up. Um, there's just a massive lack of transparency. That's almost, it's not like, I think to, for an, for a while, it was like a lack of potentially understanding, but I feel like now you see that books get it and they understand, but now they're like intentionally gaming around it with, terms or how they offer things or how things are listed one way markets without a way to play back the other side. There's, there seems to be a lot of that that's sort of multiplying for some reason that I, well, I, money, but like, it's, I don't know why that's taking off. Yeah. I, in some, in some instances, it borders on predatory in my opinion. It does. When you're just, you know, you can bet a team to win the Super Bowl, but you cannot bet them not to win the Super Bowl type of thing. That's just a random market, but that kind of stuff uh, irks me as well. So I think three for three in terms of uh, agreement, because those both those things you actually mentioned uh, bother me.